Hi! In this video, I will test how magnetproof a supposedly magnetproof SD card is. Will the data on it remain unchanged if I let my strongest magnets play with it, even when tested down to the last bit in every byte? And what about a 2000 watts AC electromagnet, also known as an induction cooker? Will that have an effect on the SD card and the data on it? Let's find out! Be careful when handling seriously strong magnets. Don't let the big magnets bite you. And don't open high voltage appliances unless you know what you're doing. I recently found this SD card on sale. I don't know this brand. Is it... Pony? Anyway, it is advertised as being magnet proof. Oh really? A dirt cheap SD card is marked magnet proof, while the expensive SanDisk Extreme Pros I usually use aren't. Sounds like a challenge to my magnets. There we have it. Oh, are we gonna have some fun with you, my little friend? I actually bought three at the sale, in case I should destroy one or two in my tests. The first test I have planned shouldn't be a problem for the SD card. I will simply let it near one of the poles of my largest and strongest permanent magnet. But before that, to test if any change happens to the files on it, I will calculate a checksum. I will use Windows PowerShell. To open it, you can right-click the Start button. Or type PowerShell after hitting the Windows key. Oh yes. This takes me back to the good old Commodore 64 days. The commandlet I will use is get file hash. This will calculate a unique checksum for the content of a file, also known as a hash value. Here, it is very long since the default algorithm has a 256-bit output. For the purpose in this case, an algorithm with a 128-bit output is more than enough, and the shorter value is easier to quickly compare. Let me show what happens if a single character is changed in the file. For example, changes O to the Danish letter Ø. The value is now completely different after a tiny change in the file's content. And if I change the letter back, the value is also back to the original, showing the content of the file is exactly the same as before, down to the last bit. Let's calculate the value for the bigger file. This will take a while since it needs to read all 10 gigabytes from an SD card. Almost 3 minutes later, we now have the value for both files on the card and are ready for the first test. Will the up to 1 Tesla strong magnetic field from this monster magnet have an effect on the two files? The data are not stored magnetically on an SD card, but this still feels wrong. And I didn't expect the card would stick to the magnet. Seems like whatever is attracted by the magnet could generate some eddy currents inside the card, electrically messing up a single weak bit or two. Well, we have a way of testing it. The card registers just fine, and the files appear fine too, but has the checksum chains for the files. Nope, not for the small text file, but it only fills a fraction of the whole card. How about the video file, which fills up almost a third? Wait, what? The value has changed? No way, I did not expect this so soon. I believe this was the mildest test I've prepared. I tried playing back the video file and saw no issues. The file is far from corrupted, but then again, a video file is not the most sensitive to change. I would not notice if a single pixel in a single frame was changed, especially when playing a 4K video file on a full HD screen. Interesting result nevertheless. I will move on to the second, more demanding test. In my video Monster Magnet Meets Flames, I made this monstrosity with two 2-inch sphere magnets. 
It may not look like much compared to the first test, but the sphere magnets concentrate their magnetic field down to narrow, strong poles. And the steel frame conducts the magnetic field lines way better than air, so the magnetic field is very strong in all of the gap between the magnets. Not to mention that opposite poles are close to each other. Combined with my plan to spin the SD card quickly in the gap, this should generate some stronger eddy currents than the first test. The card will basically experience an AC magnetic field with quickly changing polarity. Time to see if this corrupted the files. You know the drill by now. And the video file changed again. Or did it? Have a second look. The value is back to the original before I put the card near any magnet. The only explanation I have for this is that the file never changed at all. This value must have been some anomaly, an odd fluke where either a reading or calculation error occurred. How this happened boggles my mind. Did I just record the effect of a soft error caused by a strike from a cosmic ray? Uh -oh. Comment with your guess. Okay, not counting the computational hiccup, it looks like my strongest permanent magnets did nothing to the SD card. Time to bring out the induction cooker, which I expect to be the hardest challenge. This is basically a 2000 watts electromagnet with a magnetic field that changes polarity tens of thousand times a second. This will induce some serious eddy currents. I plan to do several experiments with this in a future video. Comment with what you would like to see tested. For now, let's give the SD card a try. Error. Code zero. Bummer. It senses no pan or pot is present. Maybe I can bypass it. Let's have a closer look inside. <laughs> There's not much near the glass top. The sensor should be easy to find. Looks like it is hiding inside the white silicone thermal grease at the center of the coil. It appears to be copper wire, but at this price point it is just enameled aluminum wire. Hold on. There's two pairs of wires. It has two sensors. Aha. Uh -huh. One of them could be an inductive proximity sensor. After having a closer look, it turns out both are only for thermal purposes. The big one is a thermal fuse. This will prevent the cooker from overheating. Look at that leaking capacitor. This is a brand new cooker. No wonder it was so cheap. The other is a Cena diode, a dirt cheap way of temperature controlling the cooker. But I don't see any proximity sensors. How does it know if a pot is present or not? After some online research, it turns out the coil itself is used as a sensor by monitoring the current going into it. I can't easily bypass that, so I will have to use a small pot to trigger it on. I will start with a short burst. I don't want to cook the card, just see the effect of the AC magnetic field on the data. No effect. Alright, time to cook it. After one and a half minute, it's only up to 34 degrees C. That's nothing. Are the files okay after this? Yes, they're fine. Makes me wonder how strong the magnetic field is on the induction cooker. Luckily, I have a Tesla meter that will measure AC fields. Though I am a little worried about the probe heating up. For maximum precision, the probe's temperature is constantly monitored by the Tesla meter for compensation making it easy for me to see if heating will be a problem. It is clearly getting hotter fast, but not faster than I can measure for a few seconds. Good, time to measure the field strength. Um, 60 gauss where the card was placed. Very disappointing compared to the up to 10,000 gauss from my permanent magnets. It is however stronger the closer I measure to the pot. Gives me an idea. Wow. 
Wow! Considering the magnetic mayhem this card has been through, it is amazing to me the files are perfectly fine. I thought the induction cooker would have some effect. Seems like many of you fought it too, judging by the answers to the polls. I just can't stop thinking about that anomaly with the massive magnet. Let's revisit it before the final conclusion. Video files are not easy to visually spot a small bit change in, but text files are. A single bit change should show up as a changed character. I will use a different commandlet to test all these files at once. To no one's surprise, the values are all the same, since the files are just copies of each other. Will it change after 15 minutes of magnetic massaging? No change whatsoever in the tiny fraction of the card these files fill up. Finally, I tried the same with the card filled up. Does the card have a single weak bit? As the results slowly rolled in, the conclusion was getting clear to me. This truly is a magnet-proof SD card within the limits set by the magnets at my disposal. I don't recommend doing this to your own SD cards, but for normal, everyday use, I would not worry about magnets erasing data on any SD card. Hope you enjoyed these experiments and learned something from them. I certainly did. Hmm. If you want to learn more about how to set up experiments and conduct them, then I have a great tip for you. Brilliant is a problem-solving website and app that teaches you how to think like a scientist with interactive courses and challenges. Their Physics of the Everyday course, for example, helps you understand the physics behind phenomena that you see every day, from refrigerators and toilets to traffic jams and water towers. Brilliant's hand-on learning style and interactive challenges will give you a deep understanding of the various terms and concepts involved. This way, you will be able to work out the stunning conclusions on your own. I'm a fan of science and always like learning more about it. If you are like me, then I highly recommend you go to brilliant.org slash 75 and sign up for free. As a bonus, the first 200 people using the link will even get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Then you can do more crazy stuff without any safety warnings from me. Thanks to all my patrons. Creators like me aren't always praised here on the internet, but at least I have your fantastic support. Thank you very much. Click like if you don't dislike what I do, and thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.